In February 2018, the virtual band Gorillaz won the Brit Award for Best British Band. This was the video to their acceptance speech. Sorry my bandmates can't be with me, I'm detained by your Madge, not the American Madge, our Brit Madge. The following months would be winds of mayhem and chaos. Let's start with a brief history lesson. Gorillaz is a band that's been making music since 2001 and is the brainchild of artist Jamie Hewlett and musician Damon Albarn. The selling point to the band is that the members of it are fictional people with the real creators delegated to the background. The members are keyboardist and vocalist Stuart 2 d Pot, guitarist Noodle, drummer Russell Hobbs, and bassist and self-proclaimed founder of Gorillaz, Murdoch Nichols. In June of 2018, Gorillaz released their fifth studio album, The Now Now, but a month prior they released the music video to their song, Humility. There was one glaring detail in the video that many fans were interested in. Murdoch wasn't present, which makes sense considering he was in jail. In his place was Ace, as in the bad guy from the Powerpuff Girls. And watch out! Whoop, sorry! Whoop, sorry! Whoop, sorry! Long story short for how that happened, uh, Powerpuff Girls creator Craig McCracken is friends with Jamie Hewlett, and he, along with Cartoon Network, gave the Gorillaz team permission to use Ace in the interim Murdoch was incarcerated, which ended up being a majority of the album's lifespan. On a personal note, this was actually how I first learned about Gorillaz, as every cartoon YouTuber I was following at the time was blowing up about this, which makes sense. This isn't even the first time Gorillaz and Powerpuff Girls have referenced each other, so the fact that this essentially confirmed it was a shared universe was cool, I guess. Anyway, a few days after the Humility music video, a campaign was started by the Gorillaz social media to help get Murdoch out of jail, with the hashtag FreeMurdochTrend. Alongside the campaign were a series of text chats you could have with the bassist while he was in jail, which spanned the summer and fall of 2018. This video's purpose is to comprehensively document these chats and explain the story that goes along with them. The following free Murdoch logs have been taken from Reddit, SoundCloud, and Tumblr, and will be linked in the description below if you guys want to see them for yourselves. So let's get started with the first chat of the free Murdoch campaign on June 4th. Truth be told, I couldn't actually find text-based chat logs for the first part of the story, but I did find something else. Not only was the first part of the chat done through messaging apps like Kik and Skype, but there was also an audio version done via the Amazon Alexa. You downloaded the respective skill to the Alexa, opened it with a voice command, and chatted with Murdoch as though he was calling you from the prison. Not only was this identical to the text message alternative, but you had the bonus of hearing the story straight from the mouth of Murdoch himself. Exciting, eh? Try not to soil yourself, but... This was so brilliant for the interactivity of it that the Free Murdoch skill ended up getting nominated for a Webby Award, but to my memory didn't win it. Too lazy to research. Anyway. The story Murdoch tells you is that during the shooting for their Strobe Light music video back in 2017, Murdoch got to chatting with a mysterious man, funnily enough played by Murdoch's voice actor Phil Cornwell. According to Murdoch, this man is actually a demonic warlord known as El Mierda, and ended up framing Murdoch as the head of a drug smuggling ring, leading the Green Man to time in H.M. Wormwood Scrubs prison. Of course, framing, meaning Murdoch is completely innocent in this, and he wants you to help him clear his name and bust out. Me, smuggle. Well, no, I'm a bad boy, but if I wanted something smuggled, I'd wrap it in cling film and shove it up to D's arse. The first step in the plan is to beat up the biggest bully in the prison to gain some respect. Big Balls McGinnis is the man in question, who Murdoch was also seen trying to revoke in the Brit Awards video. Murdoch gives you the warden's login info, and through what's essentially Mad Libs, you create a series of messages to be played over the PA system to elicit a fight between McGinnis and Murdoch. He's always enjoyed experimenting, and once got super gonorrhea from a pickle. This leads into the second chat on July 20th. The fight ended with Murdoch getting curb stomped, but at the very least he retained some respect among the other inmates. The rest of the plan Murdoch sends to you is in an image, where the next step is to figure out where El Mierda is hiding at. Luckily, a route is contained within one of Mierda's associates in the prison, Vlad the Inhaler, via a tattoo. Murdoch tasks you with the job of pretending to be Vlad's fiancée, Millie, and finding out where on his body the map is, and getting the picture to Murdoch. Two weeks later, on August 2nd, and Murdoch's completed the hijacking of Vlad's phone, and the conversation begins. Very quickly, Vlad's convinced of your relation to him, and one by one, you go through the tattoos on his body, none of them turning up with results. You then get him to break that there's a tattoo on his head under a wig, and he snaps a picture for you. Perfect. Two more weeks later, on August 17th, then you send Murdoch the tattoo, and he highlights at the bottom that there's coordinates. And there's only one person who would be able to decipher those coordinates and track down El Mierda. That's right. Noodle! Murdoch connects you to her phone and asks you to try and convince her to get the job done, but as expected, she isn't so keen at first. 
She does tell you that the coordinates lead to somewhere in Patagonia, and after a brief back and forth about how Murdoch is stupid, she points something out on the March to Freedom plan Murdoch made. In the corner, it says Mierda Soul Harvester, and eventually Noodle deduces that Soul Harvester may be a clue, specifically concerning 2D. <laughs> 2D's been acting like a super freak for a while now. Like something has changed kinda inside him. I know it sounds crazy, but maybe this El Mierda did something bad to 2D? And I bet Murdoch knows about it. Wouldn't you agree? And so, with 2D safety in her heart, Noodle sets off for a harsh winter's journey. Before we get to the next part of the chat logs, there's something else worth mentioning. Free Murdoch wasn't just relegated to these text messages. It spread pretty far across social media and even in the real world. On Record Store Day 2018, for example, a truck that had Free Murdoch plastered on the side was driving around California and you could get free ice cream from it. There was also a Free Murdoch merchandise pack you could buy at the time that retailed for about $100. The pack included buttons, stickers, some clothing items, etc. It was an interesting tie-in, but even at the time, this was a little outdated because, as you're about to see later, Murdoch wouldn't be stuck in prison for much longer. A few days before the next chat occurred, Murdoch's Twitter account posted this image. <laughs> My loyal comrades, change a plan. Try not to blame yourself, but plan A has gone tits up, so it's time for plan B. By which I always mean a backup plan, not that rapper who was in the Sweeney. Anyway, me old muckers, this is it. The moment of effing truth. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. Oh, but it looks awesome, plan. He's hammered, huh? Face public justice dogged. Nope. Just started waiting for the wheels of justice to turn. I believe it was me who once famously said, sometimes life comes down to a simple choice. Get busy living or get busy dying. Be ready Friday. Don't let me down. Yours faithfully, Murdoch. <laughs> this was followed up by another Twitter post that read, Free birds aren't meant to be caged. The feathers are just too bright. It's time. On August 31st, the chat began. The gif of Shawshank Redemption ended up being relevant because guess where Murdoch was? Yep, the sewer. I'm bloody escaping, mate! Prison break in progress! There was this whole free Murdoch campaign to prove that a wanker named El Mieta framed me, but that's all come to nothing! Noodles went to beat a confession out of El Mieta and ensure my release, but she's gone AWOL. Unless you've heard from her? Nope, haven't heard from Ramen. As I suspected. He managed to nab a schematic of the water system from the plumbing company and stole a prison guard's phone to communicate with you. The only problem is, you're the only one who can read the schematic and Murdoch's hit a dead end. There's three wheels in front of him, and after you tell him the direction they should be turned, the dead end opens up and freedom is on the horizon. All goes well until- Oh, bugger SHIT! I hit another gate and there's no Will Gizmo here! Balls it's gushing in now like Willy Wonka's river, only it's not chocolate! I'm screwed unless you get the gate open! Save me! Maybe close the gate. I am going to die! Shit didn't make a will. Leave it all to Madonna! Phone getting- the next chat happened in mid-September with Noodle texting you straight from Patagonia, and she's got a big story to tell. While hiking in the Andes Mountains, Noodle found El Mierda's hideout, which turned out to be a wellness spa. Upon entering, she was offered a cup of matcha tea and exposed to some lovely hot springs. Believing this to be a trap, Noodle asked to see the boss, who turned out to be El Mierda himself, a short old dude who looked nothing like the man from the strobe light video. That is not El Mierda. The real M is tiny and old. So it sounds like classic Murdoch talking a lot of shit, doesn't it? Yeah, now I don't trust him. Get ready for a sip of truth soup. I ask him if he even knows of Murdoch. He says no. He hasn't even heard of gorillas. Nothing was adding up here, so old man Mieta kindly offers me his crazy long distance calling phone. Who do I call first? The prison. And they tell me something that had me like... <clears throat> Murdoch was not jailed for snuggling. Snuggling? Jesus fucking <laughs> Murdoch was not jailed for smuggling. Can you guess what he was jailed for? Murder? Prison HR sent me this. Murdoch was arrested for unpaid parking fines. Not only that, but the day he was meant to be released from prison was the day he made the Shawshank escape. Also, the dude from Strobe Light just turned out to be a leather salesman named Juan, but either way, Murdoch seemed pretty happy about it. Noodle then gets psychological with you, and reasons that why Murdoch made the grand display was for attention, once again regarding 2D. Think about it. The more love 2D was getting, the more Murdoch's story grew. As time passed, the lie got bigger and bigger, so big he sent me, Noodle, all the way to Patagonia.
I'd known you for nothing. So it turns out the reason for 2D's white eyes and general change in personality was just an ego boost due to Murdoch's absence. Then who shows up but Murdoch on a yak! And here we come to the final chat in October, with Murdoch for one last time. After letting you call him a jerk and whatnot, he shares his side to the whole thing. Right, well, in short, everything Noodle told you is true. My wrongful imprisonment story was mostly bollocks. It was just meant to be a bit of banter, but it got out of hand. I was happily doing my time, parking fines guilty, when I hear fans outside screaming for my release. They'd even started this free Murdoch campaign. Maybe you started it? Nope, came in late. Anyway, the free Murdoch thing went straight to my head, like one of my famous Colombian Bloody Marys. I was drinking at the bar of my own ego, saying, hit me again, repeatedly to the barman, who was also me. So I started sexing my story up a bit, smuggling, not guilty, etc. Also chucked in the name El Mied I heard in the prison yard. I'm about to die. I'm swallowing logs. They're going up my nose, in my ears. For what? Nothing. To make headlines. At my lowest ebb, I finally realized what a twat I am. But it was too late. Or was it? Because then something happened. Just at the point of death, I saw... But I don't know. I can't put it into words. But it was beautiful and terrifying. I did a sketch of it. Next thing, I wake up by a sewer grate in an Aldi car park, and bombed and shit, but alive! Afterwards, he talks about having a come-to-Jesus moment, and realized he had to save Noodle. He booked it to Gorilla's HQ to regroup, hopped the plane to Argentina, and purchased a demonic yak to trek through the mountains. He even had a letter prepared for if he died along the way and El Mierda happened to find him. Side note, very sweet how Murdoch mentioned the fatherly love he has for Noodle. Anyway, fast forward to when Noodle finds him, and takes him to Mierda's wellness spa to warm up and chill out. After a day there, he and Noodle returned to England, where Murdoch vowed to try and be better to questionable results. Before this ends, here's a compilation of some various questions Noodle and Murdoch were asked, and their responses throughout this journey. Can you guess the first thing I did when I got home? Hit 2D? I'm a changed man! No, I gave a little tyke a hug and a rock and found on my travels. Might be a petrified turd, but he was happy with it anyway. Do you love 2D? He's been through a lot of trauma in his life. Mostly for me, to be fair. I only hope he'll find it in his heart to forgive me. Got anything to add to the list? Yeah, stop hurting 2D. Let's not run before we can walk. Are you gay? My sexual preferences are more complex and terrifying than you could ever imagine. You're an idiot. And yet here you are. How's Russell? He's our resident beatmaster. He's also a walking spirit house, offering sheltered accommodation to wandering souls. If I ever die, I'm gonna haunt the shit out of him, naturally. You really are the stupidest man alive. Due to an unhealthy combo of abandonment issues and a monstrous libido. What do you think of Ace? Ace is an old mate of mine. He used to be a big player of the gang Green Gang. We go way back, but that's another story. How's Ace? He's a new bass player. A little bit clingy, but his heart isn't in the right place. He has a heart, more than I can say for Murdoch. What happened to Ace? He's in back home. Last I heard, he was taking time out to write his memoirs. Naturally, I've got the lawyers on hand in case of defamation issues. How's Russell? Russ is in a bit of a sulk for some reason. Apparently, it started around the time I got back. Weird. How's Noodle? Yes, I sent her on a suicide mission for no reason, but I've said souls to so all good now. How's 2D? He's never been better. I think he was just missing me. Why would he do all this? He's an attention whore? Exactly what I was thinking! I mean... So he faked his death? No, 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 that cannot be possible, because it is me who will kill him! Do you love 2D? 2D gets lost on his way to the toilet. Why did you dye your hair? Did it for fun! Trans! Fancy a celebration pint when I'm out. I'm underage. You can have a Ribena then while I get sorted on. Have you seen trans yet? I believe people should be accepted whatever they are or want to be. And that's the whole story of Free Murdoch. Murdoch rejoined the band to finish the Now Now's tour, Ace returned to the confines of Cartoon Network, the Yak Murdoch bot became 2D's pet, and all was right with the world again. Thanks for watching, as always leave appreciation, and I will see you in the next video, so bye!